Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining me. Day 25 of the tugboat build. A scale model of the Banbury Cross. Hope you're enjoying the build so far. I am. It's doing its job. It's getting me through winter and this mad world that we're all <laughs> we're all in at present. So anyway, what's today? Today's video, another retrospective. In other words, the work's already been done. It's a bit of structural work planning the electronics all based around positioning of the aerial for a suitable signal when it's on any stretch of water so I thought I would position the aerial and work backwards from that lots of my projects evolve and this is a method I use constantly so do something and then live with it and either adopt it or change it but do something that's the methodology so a mast similar to the one on the actual Banbury Cross tugboat, a mast was erected and I was able to attach the aerial of the receiver to this mast. The receiver box would then hang down and each of the motors would take up a single channel on the radio control setup channel 2 and channel 3 in this instance so two of the channels of the receiver we used for the plugs one for each motor in past videos we looked at the electronics the speed controllers the motors and the radio control transmitter so I won't go over that again hopefully you'll be up to speed so receiver aerial mounted the receiver out of sight the cables of the each channel they decided where the ESC's would be positioned within the superstructure that only left power for each channel by a 7.2 volt stick of batteries and they would be laid again hidden in the superstructure and all that was needed was to lengthen the wires from the two electric motors I did a little bit of work on the flaps at, of the superstructure that are open to allow me access to attach the drive props, the drive shafts, the prop shaft, whatever I call it. I change it from day to day. 
and access to the batteries so once that little bit of structure work was done it was time to take the structure off put it to one side and lengthen the motor wires one wire was extremely short and it was right next to the core of the motor so that definitely needed lengthening but I thought it was a good opportunity to give myself some longish wires of the suitable amperage to take the uh, 7.2 volts and that gives me a bit of freedom when I'm moving things taking the superstructure on and off and deciding where to mount the twin ESC's electronic speed controllers and talking about lengthening wires I'm going to throw in one little tip that served me well over the years when I'm working on electronics and general electrics and that is to use some smallish pliers these are, sorry scissors when stripping the wires these are smallish I use them for trimming my tash not very often you, as you may see but I do use them and they have a slackish joint not something that you would normally look for a slackish joint but I use it to my advantage in this little clip you'll see that I lay the scissors almost horizontally on the wire that I'm going to strip and then operating the scissors normally it doesn't cut through the wire the slackness just separates the outer casing from the inner core and then it's just a simple case of pulling off that separated piece of outer cable anyway adopt it or not it just works for me back to the soldering once the wire are all lengthened it's time to mount the superstructure on the deck again surrounding the motors connect the batteries connect each motor to each power cable on the electronic speed control there are a positive and a negative for each and if the motor happens to be spinning the wrong way because the wires are just pushed in for now no bullet connectors even just bare wires pushed in if the motor is working in the wrong direction I can just swap the wires round
So the wiring for each side, the left and right, port and starboard, whatever you want to call them. Time to give the motors a spin. I put a little bit of painter's tape around the shafts of each motor, blue tape, just as a witness, so that when I move the radio control handset joysticks, we can see the motor rotate. It's essential to fault find with as least as possible variables, so I try one motor first, and when that works, forward and reverse, I then connect the other motor exactly the same way.
Both motors work. The wiring is complete. A successful build day. Thanks for watching.